Hello and welcome to Call of the Week, the show where we decide what decks we add to our collection and what decks we call. I'm here once again with Siaka. Hello, Siaka. Hello. We are moving into our third match of our round robin. The fourth and final deck will be rotated in for this game, and I will be playing Siaka's deck from the first game, Dive Limb. Siaka, do you want to go ahead and walk us through your thinking about Ruin Raven? Sure thing. So Ruin Raven has Saurian in it, a house we haven't seen yet. I'll start there. It looks like there's a lot of tempo control there. And what I mean is with the Faust, you can make the key cost very high with all the other capture in Saurian. And you can... T- with two Faust even, yep, yeah. double Faust. And Spoils of Battle can drain them from pretty high numbers because... I see that five of the creatures can generate amber on themselves. So it's potentially deleting up to 12 if there is a Ludo on the board and those creatures die. So there isn't a way to kill all of them with a Ludo out to erase the amber other than by fighting. And I still think this will really slow down decks that don't have good board control mm. and the imperial road is pretty interesting here because a lot of these creatures actually provide a stop if i need to go in, into logos or untamed but i also want to take you off key then i can imperial road out citizen tricks or a faust and that'll be a good stop turning to untamed there's a lot of opportunity to really burst up my own totals uh, we have dark harbinger and one, two, three, four actions. Uh, Unfortunately, two of the actions also uh, involve removing my own creatures. So I have to be tricky to make sure I get it right uh, because the Dark Harbinger, I think, has four powers. So it's going to be a bit difficult to make sure it's alive with the Savage Clash and Lost in the Woods. I'll need to have other creatures out. So I don't see this Dark Harbinger really popping off that much. Right. However, I do think it can provide a burst. Ghost Hawk, I think, can provide good burst. Uh, Key Frog, uh, to be a pretty specific situation for me to kill it with Savage Clash. And uh, we've got Pismire and Amber Spy Mongrel. So looks like I can get a pretty good Untamed board as well that you'll have to address. Uh, Pismire raising your key cost and the Mongrel uh, preventing you from reaping without benefiting me. And I think this deck is going to go pretty fast. So you, do not want to give me amber if you don't need to. Yeah. Logos, I see a lot of tools that help support. Um, so Evervescent Principle of Things really got out of control. You cleared my Saurian board, then I can hit you with that. Mutagenic Serum, there are a good number of mutants in Untamed. So that could allow me to use those creatures. And unfortunately, Keyfrog isn't a mutant. Otherwise, I could trigger that on an off turn. Munchling and Qmex work well together because I can discard uh, Qmex if I need to remove something and go to check. Mm. And two Qmex can be pretty annoying to deal with. And Mind Over Matter, it's going to be tricky to use with all the amber on my creatures, uh, but I could set up for a big Ghost Hawk turn. I think it's going to be used more in an offensive right. way to just mess up your board state and hopefully um, your deck doesn't have too many good yeah. play effects. It does have some, so... Mind Over Matter isn't super great in this matchup, but it could be pretty useful as a one-turn reset. Right. Well, in, in this particular matchup, it would be good if I've got a number of those upgrades out. If you didn't have any other way to clear them out, that would be a really good way to just discard all the upgrades, and then I've got not as good creatures that I need to play again. Yeah, Dive Limb has like six upgrades. Right. So that's pretty good. This could also be a way to turn off the Pain Mail. That's true, yeah, because it would it would uh, just go into the discard. Mm-hmm. And Auto Encoder, a lot of the cards in the deck seem pretty good, so I don't know if I'm going to be discarding too much. Uh, this deck doesn't rely on Auto Encoder, which I think is a good thing. I don't even know if I want to play it, because you do have a borrow. Right. <laughs> I 
I was thinking it, it might be uh, the right play to hold the borrow and try to snag the auto encoder. Right. Well, I guess I've indicated I'll, you'll be holding it for a long time, so that's kind of a mind game. You know, maybe you'll play it and then I'll put it down. <laughs> yeah. And my other artifacts, like Imperial Road, you can't do too much with that. No. Monuments of Ludo isn't super good. So I think I would play some of these artifacts anyway just to get some value. Um, Fission Bloom, right. probably won't play it. It's kind of useless artifact in general. I really think Fission Bloom should have been an Omni. Maybe that would be too good, but I don't know. It's like I almost always discard Fission Bloom. <laughs> if you have pips and logos, okay, it gets you another pip occasionally. Right. Actually, I have a I have a deck with a Lethologica that has five icons on it and a Fission Bloom. Oh my god. So that one is really nice. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Or if you have a, Q, a Qmex that gained any enhancements, that would be Oof, good. Yeah, I could be playing that all the time. I also think this deck has a really interesting potential for Ghost Talk. There's lots of creatures and uh, Ghost Talk onto Strix is always great. You could also see... This is very, very specific use case, but when you were talking through the, the deck, I just thought of use the Imperial Road to play a Saurian creature. It comes in ready because of your Fandangle and you have four or more uh, Amber, and then you use Ghost Talk to unstun it, <laughs> which would be like oh. a very specific situation where that would come up, but that is like a possibility that could potentially happen in this deck so yeah yeah i wouldn't be surprised if that happened right that'd be pretty interesting yeah just one of those neat keyforge interactions that only very particular decks are going to be able to do but it's a neat trick mm -hmm. if you can pull it off yeah so i think the overall game plan here is to just rush to try to finish the game in a small number of turns mm -hmm. yeah um, because it does have a good amount of blocks and good bursting yeah and decent amber control with the faust and the board state let's take a quick look over at uh dive limb so we can get a sure. idea of what the matchup might look like yeah the borrow we mentioned could happen uh could be really big for taking the auto encoder i think this deck benefits a lot more than your deck from auto encoder because because you're digging for those upgrades creature control in this deck there's no board wipes in here so that's pretty good news for you there's a couple of spot removal lights out to bounce things um so that could get me some amber back even with the ludos out yeah and the mug is pretty good too you have two of them right so it's is not going to be so much about wiping the board but about sort of that Picking off particular creatures with like the pain mail or fighting with some of my bigger disc creatures. Lethal Mayhem could probably get some work done to take out a, a Shrix or something. Mm -hmm. And then of course the Z-Force agent and the big upgrades. If you can get a big creature going with all those upgrades on there, you could really make some waves fighting into the opponent. I think the Matter Maker is going to make a big difference. If it turns up early, this deck goes a lot faster. In the previous game, I think it turned up near the end the garcias could make a big difference here too just slowing you down because you have so much burst it should be pretty easy to make you pay eight or possibly even ten yeah absolutely i think timing that will be critical all right well uh should we get into the game here yeah let's do it so i have a two 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 awkward hand Last time I mulliganed, it didn't go well. It did not. Although, the deck you were playing last week was particularly prone to a bad mulligan. Yeah. I think I'm going to send it back. Okay, this is better. That's good. I'm glad you didn't end up with a similar situation to last week. I ended up keeping this hand because it has the Matter Maker in it. Nice. Yeah, which seems like a pretty good way to start with this deck. You don't have any control in the deck, so it should be pretty safe. Nope. Oh, speaking of artifact uh, control, dumping two Logos artifacts for the first turn. I think that's the right call. All right, I'm also taking a less than ideal turn here. Unfortunately, getting rid of that bounce early and one mug 
before I can use it. It was not a great Shadows hand to start with, but having that Matter Maker early is what did it for me there. So, Well, now that a lot of that Shadows went by, I feel better about playing Saurian. Yep. Let's do Citizen Shrix. Faust. No Exalt. And... Spoils of battle. Sadly, I have a city-state interest as well, so it drew a lot of the high-end amber control early. Hopefully, I can cycle back and get it. Right. All right. Well, I'm going this. I'm gonna play the Gleeful Mayhem here, and uh, let's get rid of the Shrix because I'm more worried about the stealing right now than the increased key cost. That's not going to matter too much yet. Right. Cinder comes down with the turnkey next to him. Turnkey, yeah, if you do when turnkey leaves play, your opponent forges a key at no cost. So, turnkey will not just give you a free key if you kill it later. And then I get to use the matter maker and put the blaster onto my Cinder here. Nice. Pretty neat. Letting me play four cards is that matter maker and the blaster increases power okay so cinder is really strong yeah the the blaster gives plus three power and the before fight deal three damage to each of the creatures and neighbors i think we'll do untamed so it's good that i had such a big sorry in hand because now i'm likely to have big hands in the other houses sure so it's nice when houses clump together like that yeah so I'll ghost talk here Is Meyer. Cephaloist and Keyfrock. Oh yeah, lots of uh, key cost control in your deck there. And your Amber cannot be stolen because of the Cephalist right now. Yeah, that was something we didn't note about this matchup that's pretty good against Shadows. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you are, you are at 5, so I can't steal anything right now. Alright, so I'm going to go for disc because I think I need to clean up some of your board. I want to remove the threat of the key frog and I want to be able to steal later. So Cinder is going to fight into the Cephalist, remove the key frog, put some damage onto the Pismire. I think I because I, I can't get into check anyways, uh, Turnkey is going to go ahead and finish off Pismire. I want to put Snudge down where he's cozy and safe next to the Cinder. Cool. And then Brabble can come down on the other side where it's uh, leaving me uh, another flank next to Cinder for something else to be protected by Tom. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that turn. I think it's time for Logos. Go to check. Make your Snudge pretty useless. <laughs> <laughs> No reaping. Hmm. Well, I think I go shadows. Nothing is a mutant. So we're gonna hit everything with the dark wave. You lose one to Brabble, but you do get your Qmex back. Rad Penny's gonna steal one, putting me into check. Mug is gonna put me over the top there. Oh, I should have done this differently. That's okay. Shoulder Ed can go over here, and then hopefully I can ping Rad Penny off later and then have Snudge very protected. Not bad. Yeah. Ooh, this is unfortunate. Well, I guess I can try to make you pay seven. That's, uh, that's better than nothing. Yup. So, I I think I go this here. I've got a pretty neat interhouse play going on. Universal Translator can go onto Cinder. Cinder is going to go ahead and fight this Ludo, allowing me to use a non Star Alliance creature because of the upgrade. I'm going to use Rad Penny to fight. 
Faust, finish off Faust, and then Rad Penny is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Smudge can reap, clog up your hand with Ludo. Nice. And then these bone saws enter play ready. And then they can reap. Yikes. Oh, I should do something about this board. Yeah, it's getting pretty... Uh, this would be a really good time if you had the uh, mind over matter. Savage Clash, even better. Whew. Okay. A brief reprieve. <laughs> yeah. Breathe for a minute there. So I'm definitely worried about Fandangle for obvious reasons. My only way to remove it is not super great though. I think I'm gonna go Shadows. I can put the Pain Mail onto Fandangle so at least it's got a... Clock's ticking on him. Yes, exactly. It's got a clock ticking on him. Borrow comes out for nothing, since we kind of already established that there's not a whole lot of useful artifacts for me in your deck, and you already discarded the auto encoder. I'm fine with that. Vandalize. The mongrel could be annoying for me, so I'll get rid of that. Oof. And that is my turn. Puts me up to eight, so... Pretty good. Seems good, yeah. August Saurian. I can't even take you off key, but I can capture two. But do I want to do that? Yes. And I'm going to check with Luda. Right. So just enough to forge my second key here. I'm going to go this. Uh, which destroys the Fandangle, and then I can take the Pain Mail back. Z Wave Emitter can go on to the Cinder, so he will get a ward at the start of my next turn. He's going to fight the Attendant here. That's the only thing he can fight that won't kill him. Break key gets me a pip. Mind fire, hoping for a lucky hit. No such luck. I did not get to steal anything, so you're going to be able to forge. Pain mail. Hmm. Do I want it on the Ludo, or do I want it on the Octavia? Because if I put it on Octavia, and Ludo's still out when I call this next, you know, I don't get that amber back. But I might not get it back anyways, because you've got the the monument to Ludo. I think I put it on Octavia because Ludo's already damaged, and um, I don't want you to be able to use Octavia even more. Yep, seems reasonable. And that matter maker is really yeah, like it's very good. It's the accelerant in this deck for sure. Yeah, I haven't you haven't even called Starlights yet. No. <laughs> that was partially luck, too. A lot of my Star Alliance was just at the bottom. I guess I called Star Alliance the first time, the first turn to play the Matter Maker. Right, right, that's true. This is tough. I think I'll have to play Bogus. There was never really a good time to play this Effervescent. Oh. And it got stuck in my hand for a long time. Hmm. See. Yeah, I never really bursted too far past six. I think I got up to eight on one turn. Well, you got up to eight twice, but on those turns, it, there was no reason to call logos, and I hadn't forged. Got it. So I'll get these two Q Max out. Just hoping to draw something else, but that's okay. So this will allow me to flip my deck. Could play mind over matter, but I don't want to give you 
to Amber. Yeah. And uh, actually, the way the UI is set up, I can't even tell if your Cinder is working. He's not right now. He's not worded right now. Oh, he fought? No, because it's the start of your turn. And I played Oh, you played it last turn. turn. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, Unfortunately, I lost Citizen Shrix to the Lethalogica. Ooh. But that's just how it goes. Yep. You got a you got an unlucky discard with the Lethalogica in the last game too. You discarded the uh, Amber Lucian. Oh yeah. Lethalogica last time we played. <laughs> Lethalogica not doing you any favors. Not really, no. All right. Well, I'm just gonna go Star Lions because I have uh, five Star Lions cards in my hand, so. Seems like the right time. Garcia down next to Cinder so she can be protected. Lasting Shield onto the Cinder. Lasting Shield pairs really nicely with the uh, the Z Force Agent upgrades. Yep. If you can get it onto Z Force Agent, he can fight anything that's four power without even taking the damage. Yeah. It's, uh, amazing. Agent coming out. Definitely, like, if you can get all the upgrades onto the agent, that's great, but, like, having them on the Cinder this whole time has been still really good. Yep. Okay. I think it should be untamed. What should I do here? So I'll put out Dark Harbinger. Mutation of Cunning. I'll make the Octavia. So now I can use it with the serum. That's pretty cool, yeah, pairing with the mutagenic serum there. So you can use the Octavia with me. That's the best use of mutation of cunning that I've seen so far. It was actually the first time I've ever used that card too. I don't think I have any Dark Harbinger decks that are that are good. Right. So I have a Volt's Blessing in hand, and I would mm. like it if you didn't benefit much from it. <laughs> Currently, two mutants on the board for me. Which uh, is the same as you. Yeah, we both have two. Or you have three, I guess, because Octavia counts as a mutant now. Right. Sinners are so strong. It has so much armor. Yes. So Octavia can do five damage to four armor. It's just a net of one. And Octavia's got a, a time bomb on her anyways, because next time I call this, she's going to die anyway. Right. So I think Munchling and Octavia together can't kill Cinder. Mm. Because of the ward. Can Dark Harbinger do anything? Oh, Umbra Alien, of course. This is when the Umbra... Mutation actually matters. Because <laughs> I could just fight that guy otherwise. Right. Uh, yeah, Imperial Road isn't going to do anything. So there's no one Dark Harbinger can fight without dying. So he's going to read. I guess, unless I want to double fight into the Umbra Alien. But it seems bad. Mm. Fight twice to keep me from gaining one. Oh, the ordering is so rough here. Because I, I want your mutants to be gone before I play the Vault's Blessing. But um, I would also like Cinder to be gone with all his powers. So I may ha- just have to give up the one Amber here. Could also capture two more. Lots of choices. Yeah. All with seemingly pretty decent justifications. Right. I think I just get rid of this Trigon guy. Mm. Only useful because he's immune. Mm-hmm. Fight. Cinder. Trigger's effect. Get rid of Master Theory. Mm. Clear my hand. Lost in the woods. Ready, Dark Harbinger. Just to send back my K-Mex. Alright, Cinder. For sure. And Umbra Alien. Gonna fight Garcia. And now I can do the Vault's Blessing. 
gain a lot and re reap. Okay, let's see if this burst is enough. Nice, nicely done. A lot of dependencies in that turn. <laughs> it got me nine amber and cleaned up most of your and board. Importantly, got rid of all those upgrades too. Yeah, that was painful. Mm -hmm. So you could do Starlight if you have the other Garcia and take away two and use Z Force. So that's not a super great turn, so um, you know, unless there are other cards. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I can hang in there. Uh, that is, in fact, the plan. I do have the other Garcia, so I can make you pay eight at least. Umbra Alien. Put this upgrade onto the Z Force agent. Now, this is the upgrade that lets me search my deck for an upgrade, but does not allow you to pull from the discard. So, unfortunately, it's not going to do anything for me here. So, I can fight and gain one for the one upgrade. I can take out something and damage the Z Force agent. Or I can just reap for one. I can't take out the Ludo or the Octavia. Well, I mean, I could, I guess. But yeah, I wouldn't be getting the Amber. I don't know if I want to damage my Z Force agent. Although, I don't know if you let me keep him anyways. You used that Harbinger to really good effect, but I think you burned almost all of your untamed actions doing that, so I, I don't think it comes into play again. Yeah, I've played three of them. Which I think I think was all of them. Oh, I think you have Savage Clash, but that's... Yeah, there's a Savage Clash. But that's not gonna do much for you. So I'm not too worried about the Dark Harbinger anymore. Is it worth it to fight off the Munchling? Eh? Probably just because I don't think you let me keep him around and it's gonna be a while before I can really bulk him up with like all those upgrades again. That's the turn. This game's tightening up. Of course now I just made it so that if you do have the Savage Clash you can use it because I took out your Munchling. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, how are we going to get a Dark Harbinger to be the lowest creature? Uh, <laughs> not, uh, I don't have it, though. Maybe I could draw it, so I've got a Pismire. Didn't get it. Alright, Ghost Talk. Yeah. Get two here. That's bad. Okay, this is pretty great. I can go to key. Uh, no stealing. It will... Imperial Road for the first time. Wow, that's a pe pretty good get off Imperial Road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it did something. Let's make it more painful. Put on the Ghost Talk. And finally, I'm going to trash Eric Garcia. Okay, so now forcing you to stop me. Oh, yeah. I don't think I have it. Rad Penny can't steal the one I need to because of your Cephalus. I don't have another way in Shadows to get rid of the Cephalus. Star Alliance can't stop you. The Umbra Alien could get me a card for my draw, but all I have in the draw is a Imp Spectre, so that's not going to do it. All I have in Dis in hand is the two Cinders, so that's game. Wow. Good game. That, yeah, that Dark Harbinger turn was really big. Yeah. And Mutagenic Serum, that's not a card I was really looking at. Right, but it, it, it got work done for you for sure. Yeah, great game. I always like a game where there's there's a big swing there, and that, that came right at the right moment for you. That was mm -hmm. really cool. So we've got the Crucible Tracker game report. We can take a look at it. So definitely that uh, turn one matter maker was huge right like you can see that trigon he was in my hand almost the entire game and it kind of didn't matter because i kept being able to play the all the upgrades from star Alliance that i picked up and like we saw i didn't end up going star Alliance until very close to the end of the game there right so i, I think given that and how the game went last time when uh, matter maker didn't show up till close to the end of the game for you and your, your hands were kind of clunky, 
I think Mattermaker is maybe a hard mole in this deck. Yeah, it really sped things up. And then you started with those, the auto encoder and the fission bloom, and you just decided to go ahead and, and discard those. Yeah. Right away. Um, and my initial hand, it had a lot of cards that didn't make sense. Like False Blessing, I knew I needed to make a big play with that. Mind Over Matter didn't make sense. No. I sent it back, and this the second hand, I got a bit lucky when I discarded those Logos artifacts and drew more Saurian, so I could have a pretty productive turn in terms of moving cards. Right. Um, not so productive in terms of the effects. Mm -hmm. And I, we both kind of had a clunky sort of first turn or two, because we didn't have exactly the right cards uh, that we wanted. Like, having all that Shadows right away was, was not good and probably was detrimental to me later on in the game. They would have been really helpful. I still think holding on to the Matter Maker was the right call. Yeah, the Matter Maker, getting that at the beginning. I think if you have that in your hand, turn one, you should play it. Particularly against no artifact control. Yeah, and the Untamed Burst turned up all together, which was great. And yeah, when I drew the big Untamed block the first time, um, it didn't really have the burst. So I thought, like, okay, it'll show up later. So I just need to make sure I'm not totally dead before I get to it. Oh, and that's when you played the Savage Clash. Right. And then eventually it turned up, but I had to kind of hold off to do the Evervescent. Because that Logos hand was just killing me. But what I didn't realize at the time was that Mutagenic Serum was actually going to be big for the Untamed turn. Right. So be, uh, playing out the Logos first really um, helped you out there. Yeah. So Mutagenic Serum and Dark Harbinger, I'm going to be looking for that a lot more. Right. Because that can allow you to turn on a lot of other creatures if you get those mutation actions. I wonder how well this deck Ruin Raven is going to be able to use the Dark Harbinger because it does seem like a rare instance that you got of, of the four actions in the deck you got the three that you know are usable with the Dark Harbinger all in your hand at one time along with Dark Harbinger yeah so yeah those turning up in the correct order helped um, I think more importantly they turn up at the end when they have more impact mm -hmm. like I had the Munchling in place I had creatures on the board that I could mutate mm -hmm. Mutagenic Serum was already out I could lost in the woods some of your stuff. Yeah. So all that was great that it happened at the same time. Right. But yeah, my last turn, uh, you shut down the steel, the potential one steel from the penny. I had two cinders in hand, which was just like not at all useful. Yeah. And having that in your deck was good. It's just like not gonna. It's not gonna provide any stop. And the, the Cephalous redraw was actually pretty like, lucky. Yeah, just on time, too. I got two keys pretty quick and then kind of just stalled out. I was not able to get to that third. I wonder if there was somewhere in the game where I should have tried to burst up a little bit more if I could have gotten to six and, and potentially made it. I think you were happen. playing the burst game. The Savage Clash was key when you had the Discord. Um, I wonder if there was a point where could have gone to star Alliance earlier yeah the this turn on turn eight was kind of unproductive you played pain mail break key and mind fire right and so i had the three oh but you did blow up fandangle okay so that was that i was think the good. point of that yeah was to get rid of the fandangle because i didn't know what you might have had in your hand oh but i was gonna forge yes but I guess I could have done like a crazy untamed burst. I probably would have done the vault's blessing thing then, right, actually. Right. Um, so that could yeah. have been nasty. But you have no Garcia and the, or anything. The only way I could have stopped you in that turn would have been the Rad Penny. And then I could have played the two upgrades too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it still seemed a little slow. I figured there's a chance that I hit something with the Mind Fire. Oh. Uh, and, and get yeah. you off check. And you were. I think this was only your... Was it your first key or your second key that you were going to forge there? This would be the first. Yeah, so I was feeling pretty confident Yeah. that I was well enough ahead that I, I figured 
uh, try to move through the deck, get more stuff myself, um, try to craft the hand a little bit more. Right. And you had bad luck there. Like, you hit the least relevant card. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, it was, like, <laughs> not not at all helpful to hit the uh, the group thing. Yeah, thing. like, any of the other five would have been better. Half of, half of them have a pip on it. That would have been a stop. The Vault's Blessing, the Harbinger, the Lost in the Woods all could have been really... Uh, or or the Mutagenic Syrup could have really messed up your turn later there. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I think if you hit anything else, uh, you would have won. Right. Yeah, probably. I, I think that was still the right move that turn. And going into yeah. Star Lines would have been... I mean, I would have just been clearing out the hand there. And then it wasn't until the next turn that I drew big on Star Alliance, and then that's when I went. After that, I went Star Alliance. Um, and I'd already played Savage Clash, so I mean, the best thing I was going to do was Lost in Woods. Right. Well, that was a neat game. I definitely think it's been the closest game of this season so far. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I, I love uh, big plays. Quite a quite a great comeback. Uh, you got mm-hmm. any any final thoughts on the game before we wrap things up? Yeah, all the dive limb is gone. O and two, like the first time, it didn't have the matter maker, and the second time, like pretty much the like perfect turn came up uh, against it, even though it was uh, well ahead most of the game. So I I still think even though it hasn't won yet, that dive limb is a pretty strong. Deck. I would say so. It's been competitive in both of the games. Yeah. How do you feel about this particular matchup? Do you think that Ruin Raven is the the favorite here, or uh, do you think Divelin wins most of the time? I think Ruin Raven is favored. Um, the Saurian came out of order for me. Uh, Imperial Road mm-hmm. only hit once, uh, but the Untamed turn lined right. up pretty well. I think it could line up even better. If I had the other mutants out, like Fandangle and Pizmire and stuff, so I think it's I think it's favorite. Mm, I think that might be right, especially because Dive Limb does not have any board wipes, which is I think pretty critical against Ruin Raven to get all that amber back from the dinos. Right. Next week, what are we doing next week? So next week we're gonna go back to Extra Man and it'll face Ruin Raven, but. You'll be piloting Ruin Raven, so we'll switch places for those decks. And we'll see how those two match up against one another. Well, be sure to come back next week for Ruin Raven versus Extra Man. Thank you for joining me, Siaka. All right. Anytime, Brobner. I've been Brobner89. This has been Call of the Week, and we will see you back next time.